Hi everyone, Jonathan here at Cheshire Gun Room. I'm just going to talk you through a scope setup and the type of scope we would sometimes set up for a customer on a, an air rifle kit. So this here is a Virac HB 98 laminate, um, nice accurate rifle. And we've decided we're going to pair a scope with it to put it on the shelf because sometimes people don't quite know exactly what scope they, they, they want and we'll try and build a kit that's going to cover many sort of shooting applications. So for this, we've picked out a Hawk fast mount. Um, it's a three to 12 by 50. So it's got a adjustable magnification. You can zoom it in and it's 50 mil objective. It's quite a nice, uh, good quality scope, nice size. Um, adjustable parallax. So you can, you can focus your front lens. Uh, another nice feature on here, it's got an illuminated reticule. Um, these are really good value, you get a lot of scope for the money, uh, very reliable, good warranty and backup with this particular brand report. And it also comes with a set of two piece double screw uh, scope rings. So I want to set this up on here now. Um, good practice when you buy a, a kit style scope that is supplied with the rings and bases. I prefer to um, strip the rings down completely because I, I I find that from the factory when they're set up the the, the the mounts might not be exactly right and you could potentially get a little bit of rocking. I'm sure the factory's probably used a jig to assemble it all and it's probably not that bad, but I think good practice is to just set it up from scratch. So I've stripped down the rifle scope mounts now. You've got the two bottom halves and the two top halves. I've got the screws separate. Um, before you actually start setting the scope upon the rifle, always make sure that your rifle or your air rifles is, is unloaded. I've already checked this gun is safe and unloaded, so there won't be any accidents. Um, on this particular Virac, there is some, there's three recoil lugs at the bottom here. So what we can do is on one of these scope mounts, that one, there's a little recoil screw and we can position the recoil lug, which in this case it's a little Allen screw, we can position it in one of these rings so that with recoil, if the scope mounts are tied up correctly, they shouldn't move, but they, they obviously can creep occasionally, but with any recoil, they'll stop and they won't be able to slide back past there because that pin basically is, is, is blocked or obstructed by this recess. So usually I find you have to go to the back one on most springers like this. With this style of scope ring, there's no particular right or wrong way, whether you have the screws on the left or the right. I'm a right-handed shooter, and I usually prefer to try and get any fit, fittings like this on the left-hand side, just so that they're out my way. It doesn't make much difference, but you, you could apply it on the other way. Certain rings do have to be mounted a certain way around, but on this instance, we can mount it either way we like. So in, in with this scope, you do actually get Allen keys with it. You get the three Allen keys you'd need for the recoil pin, the side screws and the top screws. This is a, a dovetail, typical nine to 11. And that would be approximately the right spacing for the scope. So by stripping this kit down, it just means that when, when we put it all together, it's all gonna be set up correctly, just in case there was any error in the, the alignment of the factory when they put the scope rings onto the scope. When you tighten the rings up, it's a good idea to, to alternate it. I'll just switch this round and you can see. It's a good idea to alternate the, the way you tighten the, the screw up. So a little bit on that one, a little bit on there, and you just keep pinching up the slack basically. And as you tighten one, it'll just take the pressure off the other one. And you don't need to be swinging off the Allen keys. The idea is to just nip them up. Um, you don't want them too tight, because if they're over tight, you can either strip the threads. Often it's a steel screw and an aluminium scope ring. So you don't, you don't want to over tight because you will strip the threads. And basically, that's the amount of pressure you need. You don't need a huge amount of pressure. You don't need to over tighten them. Um, then I'm going to spin this back round again, easy for me. Then we position the scope on here. Now there's a few different methods of mounting the scope to make sure you, you set it up correctly. Some people like to use these sort of little bubble levels. I usually just sort of 
do it by eye. I've set up many scopes over the years. The idea is you would get the, um, the gun mounted in a jig like this, and you'd adjust it until you get something flat on the rifle, whether it be the rail. I know that this will be machine square. You adjust the scope, you adjust the gun, sorry, until the bubble is completely in the center of the, the lines on the level. And then you could take a, uh, a bubble level like this, put it on something flat. So if we were to take the turret cap off in this instance, we could set a different level, maybe that one, that'll be fine. And you just you twist the scope round until you got it level. And the idea is then your crosshair should be absolutely um, nice and true to the rifle and, and be straight where you look through it. So that, that's one way. What I like to do is put the scope rings on, the, oh sorry, the, the top half of the mounts on. Start putting the screws in just very loosely to start with. So I just wind them in a little bit. And I always alternate the way in which you, uh, you I screw the screws down. So I'll go from this side to the far corner then opposite and then to the the other corner uh very similar to the way you would tighten up a a wheel on a on a car you you alternate which screw or you you go opposite to the screws that you you're locking up so that you apply the pressure evenly because we don't want to clamp the scope mount off to one side and force it down too much on one side so these aren't actually Locking up, yeah, I'm just taking up all the slack. I can still move the scope in there. There's inside the scope rings, there's a little bit of like um, a, a special tape and it basically helps to grip on the scope tube because it's a, quite a smooth tube. Um, and it also helps to prevent damage in the, the tube. So I usually just sort of mount the scope and adjust it. So I know I have spaced these probably a little bit further than what we would need, because there's not really any adjustment now to slide the scope up and down. So you could close the mounts in um, and then it gives you a bit more positioning. So once you've got the eight screws on top and the top half of the scope mounts uh, are down, you can still adjust the scope to set it up. So this is where people may use the, the levels and level it out like this. And then when they get it absolutely in the right spot, you know that that scope, the crosshair will be straight, level and, and plumb to, to the rifle. Another way without the levels is basically mount the rifle and you can look through the scope, look at the crosshair and if you take the uh, horizontal uh, part of the, the crosshair, I'm looking through there at the minute, I can see it looks nice and flat and then if you just glance down at the back of the rifle and you basically want to try and make sure that the, the, the flat part of the crosshair looks sort of parallel to the flat part of the rifle here and make sure that the, you haven't got the part of the crosshair going up or at a slight angle. Sometimes you can use your um, vertical crosshair and you can plumb it with something in the distance that you know will be straight, whether it be the, the side of a, a unit or a wall. You just look through the rifle scope and if it looks out of square, you can just rotate it ever so slightly and get it right for yourself. Once you're happy, your scope is in the right position Basically, it's time to start compressing these. So what we'll do is we just nip up the slack on that one. And whilst doing this, I'm making sure that I've got the even, same amount of gap between the top and the bottom mount. And I will just literally take up the slack on all screws there. And I'm going opposite corners and then opposite across and opposite corner again. And just keep doing that until you take up all the slack. And like I say, each time you compress a screw, just a, an eighth of a turn or a quarter of a turn, you, you're taking a little bit of the pressure off some of the other screws. And then you just want to go around and keep nipping it up. We don't want to over tight. That is, is more than ample. That scope's not going to go anywhere. If you do over tighten the scope, then you, you can actually compress the tube and you can damage it. And that is basically nice and secure. That's not going anywhere. So when you come to zero your scope, first of all, I will adjust the eye relief for my eye if necessary. So I would look through my crosshair at my target and I would see to make sure that the, the crosshair is nice and sharp and clear. If it's a bit fuzzy or blurred, back that out ever so slightly and get it to focus up. If it then goes out of focus, you just wind it back in a small amount until it is sharp. If I was gonna zero this rifle myself now, I'd probably zero it at about 
probably 25 yards, depending on what the purpose of the, the rifle was for, but let's just say 25 yards. I will set my parallax here at the, between the 20 and the 30 for 25 yards. Um, zoom, I'll probably go for about eight, nine magnification, maybe 10 if uh, or, or 12, you could, it depends what suits you and what you prefer. Most hunting, Obviously, the more you zoom in, that you close your field of view. So most hunting, I like to have my scopes on around about 8 magnification. So if I was walking around in the field of this, I'd probably leave it on 8 mag. If I saw something very close and I had the opportunity to taper time my shot, I might sort of back the, the magnification down so it gives me a bigger field of view and, and I can focus on my target close range. If it was quite far away, I may decide to increase the magnification and zoom into the target. Um, the easiest way to zero a scope I find is to just have a few shots, get a, a grouping with your pellets or your, your bullets if it's a rimfire, a rifle, a sensor fire, and it's sort of trial and error, and trial and improvement I find. Have a handful of shots, get a, a grouping, get used to the rifle, and then try and take that grouping over the center of your target where you're trying to shoot. So one click on most rifle scopes is a quarter of inch at 100 yards. Basically that means you need 16 clicks to move the, the point of impact an inch at 25 yards. Rather than count clicks, what I find is it's easier just to give it half a turn, a quarter turn. So I'd have a few shots now at my target. If I decided that, right, I need to bring the, the grouping up an inch and to the right an inch, I'd probably give this about three quarters of a turn up and I'll do the same for the, the windage. And uh, to the right, I give that say three quarters a turn, a couple more shots, see what my grouping's like, and then give it a bit more if it needs it or take it back a little bit. So once I'm happy and I've got the grouping um, over the center of the, the target and I'm, I've managed to get a few pellets in the same spot continuously, I'll be satisfied that I've got the scope zeroed accurately. So I've replaced the, the dust caps on here so that there's no dirt or debris gets inside the scope and then that way the, the, the turrets are not going to get adjusted either. And, and another thing that's nice if you have a, a new rifle scope set up with, on your rifle is to just sort of get to get used to using it. So this particular scope has got a mill dot reticule. I'd probably then, if I've zeroed at 25 yards, I'd probably put a target at maybe 10, 15, 20 yards, and then again, 30, 35, 40 yards. And I would aim using the sensor of the crosshair at this, uh, right on that target, take a few shots, get a nice grouping. And then what I'll do is myself, or the technique I like to, to use is I put the crosshair back over the center of the target and I'd see where the pellets have landed. So obviously at 10 yards, the pellets are probably gonna be a little bit higher. So I'll then work out which increment on the um, mill dot reticule would be a 10 yard shot. And then if I go to a, a 35 or a 40 yard shot, I'll probably find that it's the second or third mill dot down. And you just get used to your rifle scope, your rifle, and it just it helps to give good accuracy and consistency. And when you judge the distance and you get used to judging distance, you'll be able to put the the, the dot on the, the reticule right exactly where you need to shoot and you should have a nice accurate shot. Sometimes people just like to use the, sen the, the, the sensor of the crosshair and just hold over or hold under. And that's part of the, the skill with the free field craft side of learning how the scope and the air rifle work together in this trajectory. Um, that's basically it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and it's a bit informative. If you've got any questions on setting up a rifle scope uh, or need any tips or pointers, feel free to call the store or give us a call. Thanks for watching.